All the stars are fundraising for children in need this week. Now, when you're watching this from the warmth of your own home, just remember that at this moment, I am speeding around the coast of Britain. Well, not speeding, driving very gently, actually. Raising money for children in need. It's the Round Britain Breakfast Show. We're doing live Radio 1 breakfast shows from different points around Britain. And we're hoping to get back to London by Thursday night. But you never know, do you? Bye. And Mike's not the only one travelling for charity. Whoa. Yes, yeah, all right for old Smithy going around the country by car. He's had a right cushy number. What I'm doing is jogging for children in need on my BBC Radio 2 morning show from various stadiums all over the country this week. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Fancy going by car. Join Mike Smith with the Round Britain Breakfast Show at 7 a.m. and Ray Moore on Radio 2 at 5.30 a.m. doing their bit this week for children in need. Now on BBC One, Serena Scott and Jeff Banks discover the latest ideas of colour and style north of the border in The Clothes Show. come north of the border to see what the sterling men of sterling think about style but in weather like this i think all they want to do is go back to bed and wrap up warm well he should be wrapping up warm but look at it gosh <laughs> mated scythe it's pure sex in scotland <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the guys in sterling the way they dress um i think they dress okay he looks great doesn't yeah. he his leather jacket on and what about the blokes do you think they're stylish up here the majority are stylish but then you've still got the select few who look terrible do you think <laughs> selena can do anything for the men of sterling yeah, I think she's good. She's good. let's go inside and find out <laughs> this this is a great shape and it's amazing the influence that that French guy Gautier has had because he started everybody on these kind of like very yeah. soft shoulders contrast buttons and this one it feels good uh, as well and this is from a Swedish company called Hennis mm -hmm. um, and it really is a great cut it's real yeah you can see it, it hangs nicely yeah. Does that feel comfortable? Very much so. It's, bit, it's hard to tell. It's Come a nice shirt, this one, so. So would you normally wear a kind of formal suit like that? I would. I've had that kind of cash. Well, this <laughs> one's not too expensive. I think this is around, around about 100 quid mark, so that's not, that's not, not too bad. You know, for the kind of feel that you get off something like this, and you feel good all the time, you wouldn't care where you went, you, you'd feel so good. Should we try and get an outfit together on that? You won't put you in a blazer. That's pretty boring. Something like that? No? No, I'm already... No, it's boring, isn't it? Let's find a really expensive jacket. That's not one. What do you think about that? Is it expensive? <laughs> yeah, I think it's expensive. Well, let's try it on. Let's have a go. Tom, have you got those clothes on yet? Yes, I have. Let's have a look. How do they feel, first of all? It feels surprisingly very good. Very good indeed. It feels very comfortable. Even though it's a bit on the big side? Yes, but I think that adds to it. You know, yeah. it have a look the in the mirror and see what you actually think. And what do you think, girls? I mean, does he look improved? It's very smart. I consider being seen with you on the right occasion. <laughs> do you like guys wearing suits? Yes, it's a nice shape. I like the way it kind of goes like that. No. He's quite a hunk now, yeah? Yeah. He <laughs> looks smart, too. We wouldn't say that. <laughs> Under the guy with the green fingernails and the torn jeans. Well, we tried this one on him, and it looked dreadful. It was far too big for him, drowned him. So, wait till you see what we've done. To Peter, come on out. Oh, then. Doesn't that look great? Give us a big twirl. Yeah. What do you think of that then? You've got you into a suit after all this. Well, it's the first time I've been in a suit in my life. Is it? I had a suit jacket on once and it was suede, grey suede, and it didn't look like a suit jacket when I wore it. But this does look a bit like a suit. <laughs> but do you like it? Well, it's not what I would have chosen in the shops, but I don't know. Yeah, I think I can get used to wearing it. 
So why did you pick the shirt? See, because it's made by French Kate. What, you like their stuff? I like it. It's brilliant. What would you call this look? See, I don't know. Um, hipster Hip or something like that. Hipster, hip hop, gum wrong, or your own? Yeah? Let's try a jacket on. See if we can find a jacket you like to go with that. You're fairly demanding. Just tell me what you think of these. One more time. One more time. Hey, Let's have a look at you then. Let's take it off. Oh, don't interrupt, Greg. Now, nah. and that jacket? Yeah. Isn't that lovely? What, let's see the make. Radius. Well, actually, that's opening up now. There's about four shops opening up today throughout Britain. It'll be coming to Scotland very shortly. Yeah. I think that jacket costs, if I'm right, about £55, which isn't bad, that's is really it? Good, yeah. Turn around. I love it. And your trousers. Where do you get the trousers from? The trousers are by Radius as well. Are they? Let's have a look at everything. Let's take you and dress you. Well, I think you look absolutely fantastic. And that's a silk tie, isn't it? Yeah. Let's have a look and see what the women think. Come in. Put it on again. It's on. Yes. Quiet. Don't like it? I like the shirt. That's about all. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So do you take any notice of women in Sterling? Not anymore, no. <laughs> what is it about a kilt that women find attractive? Well, when the dancer goes up in the air. <laughs> I have to ask you this question. The nation is waiting to know. What do men wear under their kilts? <laughs> Nothing. No! <laughs> They're not supposed to wear anything. What, some of them do, or all men just normally wear nothing? Well, my sister was married last week, and her husband didn't wear anything. There we have it, folks. <laughs> the truth. Dandy, dandy, we're gonna go now. This is Carnaby Street, the fashion pundit's to... paradise of the swinging 60s. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, though, it's a tourist stop-off point, a place where visitors can get their hair sprayed green. But don't pass it by because something's about to go down. It won't be long, yeah, 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 yeah. It won't be long, yeah, 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 yeah. It won't be long, yeah, 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 yeah. Till I belong to you. Sweet my sweet. Mary Quant is the lady who gave us miniskirts. She began designing in 1955, but it wasn't until 1965 that things really took off and an OBE followed award after award. Miss Quant, are you ever surprised by the measure of your own success? Oh yes, I think every day. Why's that? I think because when we started, uh, we thought we were uh, designing clothes for other art students, for people in Chelsea. This is your new shop. Why have you chosen Carnaby Street as the location? Oh, because Carnaby Street is now right in the centre of where all the action is. Where all the uh, music business, the pop music business, the uh, film business, uh, studios. It's where so many of the career girl uh, jobs are and so many people work up here. It's really a fun area. So it's a happening place for you? Yes. Now, you actually pioneered and introduced the miniskirt some 20 years ago and then went on to build up a large empire from your shop, Bazaar. How did you get started in the fashion business? Well, we started there with a shop um, rather like this uh, in Chelsea with the miniskirt and the elongated cardigans and all the accessory pieces, the tights and socks that went with them. Now, everything is beautifully packaged and colour coordinated. What are you actually offering the public? But all the goodies of fashion, all the yummy things that can G up fashion and make it uh, more individual, more you, more special. The clothes themselves are simple and interchangeable. Can you describe mm. what Kate has got on here? Mm. A collection of absolutely fizzy, flirtatious skirts, with net because and light crap. Lovely, lovely net. It's really, yeah, absolutely frivolous. But you can pull <laughs> on top of your uh, pedal pushers or tights or cycle shorts right and then the tops either the, off the shoulder right so that's actually not an all-in-one that is no, a top two pieces or oh, this little high neck you right know, to make it sort of absolutely daytime and you can just swap the pieces around 
and all the pieces other than the fizzy ones, um, little mini skirts and the different tops. Which is what I've got on the bag, yeah. like yeah. your yeah. one you're wearing comes in the bag, a mini in the bag. Now this is a completely different look. Can you explain what Katie has on here? Yes, it, it's another of the tops, high neck top, uh, skating skirt. All these pieces can be put together in different ways. You could wear that high neck top with a frou frou skirt, or with a classic skirt, a very mini. Um, and then the over the knee socks, the garters. <laughs> shops in Japan. What have the Japanese taught you about selling? Oh, so much. Um, that shopping should be fun, that it's like buying yourself a present, uh, that uh, you don't need a very large area, that things can be packaged in an enchanting way that's small and compact uh, makes it, and makes it easier for you. Um, the fun of fashion, the way you can put the pieces together. And how well would you say you've been received in uh, Japan by the Japanese public? Tremendously. I love working there. I'm you know, very proud of the fact that they love our designs. We, d we do all the designs in Chelsea and take them out and work them into product with the Japanese. Many of the things are made here in Europe, many of the things in Britain, and we export out to Japan, and other things are made there, and we will be exporting them back to Europe. Now, you've been in the business for a while. Have you seen any kind of obvious changes? I see fashion very much as a sort of uh, an ongoing Thing that evolves, you know, it's a growing thing, and it's a, it's a way of adding pieces to, to your favourites. rummaging around in your wardrobe and throwing together a few garments just ain't good enough in the looking good stakes. What you need is to put some thought into the head-to-toe look and this is where accessories come in.
Quant's shops in Japan, all 95 of them. And the Japanese are no slouches when it comes to selling their wares over here. You may already be familiar with names like Izumiyaki, Kenzo, and Yoji Yamamoto. But the Japanese haven't always had success over here. Yoji Yamamoto's first shop failed. But he's back, and to prove it, he's throwing a party. And if you can afford £700 per suit, then you're invited. Clothes are expensive. I do. I think. I do think it's. Uh, it's uh, for me very honestly. The price is crazy. When I export them from Japan, everything comes crazy. with Japanese designers. Why do you think that is? I think the younger English are very keen on good cults, and I think the Japanese are the best cult there is, frankly. They combine uh, tremendous chicness with an easy-to-wear style. It's not too difficult to wear, and beautifully made. It's really beautifully made. Do you think that, the, um, that being beautifully made justifies the cost? It is rather expensive to buy one of the suits. It's savage, actually. I mean, I know personally, I always buy my Yoji clothes on the sale, which I'm always rather embarrassed about. Now, his first shot was a flop. Do you think that was anything to do with the fact that his clothes are expensive? It's to do with his clothes being expensive. I mean, they're naturally expensive because they are, you know, top designer names. But also, I think it's the fact that stores like this tend to be, like, incredibly intimidating for the average person to come in. I mean, I certainly, you know, wouldn't like to walk in the first day it opens and be the first person to walk through the doors and to suddenly see these, like, tall, stick-thin um, assistants come up to yeah. you wearing these you know, clothes. close my clothes, it means nothing. Normally, usually, I wear second-hand clothes. Have a go at that. And this is quite big. It's probably a size bigger than you'd normally wear. Um, this one, I think, is from Principles for Men, and it's actually got great detailing in, like, sort of, it's in pure wool, a couple of pockets yeah. on the inside. Yeah. A bit bigger than you'd normally wear, yeah, but it's bigger. how does that feel? Comfortable. I think, also, you've got to get kind of used to wearing them a bit long over the hands. Yeah. Most guys feel uncomfortable, but it actually looks good. It makes you Something almost... Better, you know, 
Yeah. Once you get used to it, it's, it's okay. You want to listen to this? Mm -hmm. oh, it's a Christmas song. Yeah, it's silent night. <laughs> Little Santa's pressing another one to stop it. Oh, isn't that sweet? Okay, how does that feel? It's pretty comfortable. Yeah, it's a bigger jacket than you'd normally wear, isn't it? That's yeah, look at the back of it. Yeah. Right. Let's take the jacket off, and underneath you've got, what, a sweatshirt? Which is, you wouldn't normally wear over a shirt. Yeah. Put that off. Let's have a look. And again, what tucked in the trousers, which I felt makes it look a lot stronger. Does that feel okay? It feels comfortable. Really yeah. Comfortable now. now, doesn't that look good on you? Well, I wear one like this. Well, let me just hold on. Now, what do you think? Yes, I wear one like this with my regimental badge. Do you? But that's a cracker of a badge, isn't it? Not as good as mine. Isn't it not as good as yours? <laughs> This, I have to tell you, Selena, the duffel coat is the major prediction for next autumn, 1988, really... so Ray's ahead of his time. It's great. Well, I'm in fashion, though. Absolutely, well, well yeah. Done. You've got to wait till next year, though, Ray, but, like, <laughs> next year, watch out, everybody's going to be wearing duffel coats. Great. Right. <laughs> How do you think of all these buttons all over everything that need doing every well, morning? Oh, I like them. Yeah? Hang on, this... they, keep the, they keep the coal on. Saves you doing the laundry, doesn't it? You can actually, like, right. sort of, or doing the ironing, you All can right. just buckle everything just, back in place. You can just place. leave them. Who does the laundry for you while you're away at university? I'm not at university. Ah, so you wouldn't know then, would you? <laughs> no. <laughs> There's always one like you. <laughs> Why do I always get these ones? <laughs> do you know, that would look really good on you if it was just a bit bigger. I reckon we get another a huge jacket. Geoffrey, is there yeah. a big jacket anywhere? I'll have a look. Or even a big coat, a big kind of chunky woolen. It says I'm coming, coat. No, 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 no that's really old-fashioned. What do you want? Talk I want something me. that's chunky. Uh, something chunky? Yeah, and, and colourful. <laughs> right, the that? trouble with a lot of these men's clothes is that they're made to fit really kind of tiny guys. No, that's getting better. Still a bit small. Still a bit small, is it? Yeah. Hang on, I'll what be What do you back. think of that, though? Can you see? Yes, that yeah. would be yeah. good and jacket? warm. Mm -hmm. What do you think of hoods? I mean... I like them. Yeah? Just, just a bit extra. Later. Hey? Just a bit extra. And what, would you wear another jacket over the top of that, or just that one on the side? I'd wear a lot underneath it. So what, pile up jumpers. different things, mm -hmm. yeah? That bright colour jumper in the black. And that trouser that goes with... Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of quite a sort of baggy fatigue trouser, sort of, you know, no. two full pleats. Small pocket here, which I won't mention what that's for. Uh, and really like a good shape, good styling. So grab that and then see if you can find some other things over there that you'd actually like to layer on the back. Yeah, okay. I'm just an average man with an average life. I work from nine to five. Hey, hell, I pay the price. All I want is to be left alone in my average room. But why do I always feel like I'm in the twilight zone? And I always feel like somebody's watching me. Okay, so before we go, I've got one or two little things for Geoffrey. First of all, a little tie with a canary on the front, because he's always chirping away, isn't he? And all this You grey... are taking the mickey out of the Royal Academy, you realise that. <laughs> and all this grey and white and black and white and everything else. There you go. If you should jump up. Gusting taste. No, come on, take, look, look to camera with it. Put it on with it. Pick it up. <laughs> look at it. Put it on. Put it on. Awful, isn't it? And a pair of winkle picker boots. So there you are, Geoffrey. That's from me to you, with love. <laughs> And I thought she had great taste. <laughs> Sterling stuff from the men of Sterling, and trust me to get done for by a Scotch. Oh, and we'll see you next week. Another chance to see that Scottish edition of The Clothes Show tomorrow evening at 7.35 on BBC One.